Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And first, as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now with this part, we finally start talking about functions. And then in some upcoming videos, I can tell you what a continuous function is. But first, let's start with some simple definitions. Overall, the term function is not completely fixed. Sometimes it just has the same meaning as map or mapping, and other times it stands for a special map. This is exactly the case here. For me, a function f is a map where the codomain is given by r. So the possible values for the map are real numbers. Also often, the domain i is a subset of the real numbers as well. In this case, the graph of a function can be visualized in a simple coordinate system. So we have two real number lines and a domain on the x-axis. And then for example, the graph of such a function could look like this one. Now when you see something like this, you might already think of so-called continuous functions. I can already give you the overall idea now, but of course we will discuss all the details later. In a rough sense, a continuous function is a function whose graph has no jumps. We don't need any smoothness, but for a function defined on the whole number line, we have a connected graph. Hence, in a moment we find a jump in the graph we consider, we immediately know we have a function that is not continuous. Now, the idea of continuity is always that small errors on the x-axis translate back to small errors on the y-axis. For example, in the case of this jump here, our implication here is not given. You see this if you imagine that we push the number x here just a little bit to the left. Then the value of y has immediately a big leap to this point. So no matter how small the change in x is, the change in y is always this large. Therefore, the property continuity will guarantee this nice property here. However, before we define this maybe complicated property, let's first talk about some simpler properties. First, let's discuss what a bounded function is. Here again, we have a function that maps the points from a given set i into r. And now we simply call this function f bounded if the range of this function is a bounded set. Please recall, there are different notations for the range of a given map. Of course, it always means the same, namely all the values in the codomain which the map hits. Okay, and the set now should have an upper bound and a lower bound. Therefore, equivalently, we could say the supremum and the infimum of the set are finite. Or also equivalently, we could say the supremum of the absolute value is finite. So you see, no matter how we put it, the definition of a bounded function is always very simple. Also the visualization is very clear, the graph is bounded in the y direction. So for such a graph, you can draw a horizontal line such that the whole graph is below this line. Also on the bottom, you can draw a line such that the graph is above this line. Now what you can see is, this is a straightforward generalization of a bounded sequence we have already discussed a lot. However, now I want to combine both concepts. We call this a sequence of functions and indeed it's very abstract but not so complicated at all. Just imagine that we have a lot of graphs where we go through them in discrete time steps. So there we have our first graph and then comes the next one and then the third one somewhere and this just continues because we have infinitely many of them. So formally we just have a sequence where the index starts with 1 and goes to infinity. However, now the sequence numbers themselves are not just real numbers but functions. The only restriction we usually have here is that all the functions involved have the same domain. Hence the subset i here is the same for all functions fn. So you see, this is really not such a complicated concept. In fact, we immediately get a connection to our ordinary sequences when we fix a given x. So let's call it x tilde here. And then we can just look at the values for all the functions at the given point x tilde. Therefore what we get is an ordinary sequence of real numbers. 
Hence, at this point, you shouldn't have any problems dealing with such a sequence. For example, you could ask, is this sequence bounded, or is it monotonically increasing, or is it even convergent? However, now we can ask even more, because all of these things can depend on the given x tilde. So you immediately see, we have infinitely many of these sequences here. And in conclusion, infinitely many questions about convergence. And all these questions translate to the question, is this sequence of functions in some sense convergent? To answer this question in a meaningful way, we first have to define what the distance between two functions is. We don't have that at the moment. However, we will deal with this in the next video. Therefore, I hope you are excited and we can meet in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.